Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to one of the more recent rabbit holes that I've been down in regards to bikes. It had me learning all about hub engagement angle, backlash, had me running out to the garage to check all of my bikes, including Mrs. Llama's bike, and had me sourcing an upgrade for one of them. Now I have to warn you now, if this is something that you haven't dived into before, it's something that you can't unlearn. If you know, you know, and I can almost guarantee the next time you're on your bike or smart trainer, you'll be thinking about exactly what I'm about to talk about. And you might wanna spend some money on upgrades, so I can't be responsible for that. I'll pause the video right here to give you the opportunity to not learn this and maybe save yourself some cash. All right, you still here? Let's roll. So in this video, I'll be referencing the DT Swiss website. It's a fantastic resource for exactly this topic, so I'll pull it up right here as we get stuck into things. Now the basics of a free hub, that tick, tick, tick sound that you hear when you're not pedaling is the free hub mechanism turning in a direction that it is freely able to do so. When you put the pedal down and tension on the chain, that free hub will engage and all things being correct, your rear wheel will turn, your bike will move forward. Some free hubs are loud, some free hubs are quiet, some sound like there's an angry swarm of bees just a few feet from your butt. But when you start pedaling, everything locks into place and shuts up. Now it's that locking into place process that this topic is all about. This video will be focusing on ratchet style free hubs from DT Swiss, but everything I'm discussing also applies to pole style free hubs, like this one right here. Okay, onto engagement angle, and DT Swiss have a great example shown on screen here. So the engagement angle is the maximum degree that the free hub body can rotate until the teeth of the free hub system engage and accelerate the hub, as I mentioned before, locking into place and moving the bike forward. The angle is calculated by dividing 360 degrees by the number of engagement points on the free hub system. They show a 36 point of engagement mechanism, which results in a 10 degree engagement angle. Now, if you step down the points of engagement to 18, that then steps up the angle of engagement to 20. So the free hub needs to move 20 degrees between engagement points. On the flip side, if you step that up to 54 points of engagement, the engagement angle then reduces all the way down to 6.66 degrees, meaning less rotation to grab that free hub engagement and start riding forward. Now that leads us on to backlash, which is the maximum idle distance the crank can turn before the free hub mechanism engages and converts the force on the crank into acceleration of the wheel. They state here that backlash is influenced by three factors, the crank length, the gear ratio, and the engagement angle, what we've just discussed. Don't worry too much about the complex mathematics there on screen. I'll get to a real world example of exactly what this means in the Llama Lab in just one moment. But before diving into that, it's worth mentioning just quickly that when it comes to full suspension mountain bikes, there's an even deeper rabbit hole to go down with pedal kickback. Now, I'm not going to go into that today, maybe for a future video, but it is quite fascinating, all the mechanics behind exactly what goes on with pedal kickback, engagement angles, etc. Okay, let's get some hands on in the Llama Lab with what this is all about on a road bike. Okay, what I have here is Mrs. Llama's bike with a DT Swiss 350 rear hub with an 18 point of engagement ratchet. And there's a lot of free air there. The crank has to move through before the engagement locks into place. That's in the 3630, I think on the back. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of nothing happening right there before that engagement kicks in. Now, what does that mean? Well, when clipping in, the pedal moves. And that's without the rear wheel moving. If the rear wheel was moving, you've got to chase that engagement even further. So there's one issue there. When pedaling along and coasting just for a moment, you've got to chase that engagement over. You can hear the click. So again, pedaling through that free air, through that backlash or that angle before the engagement really kicks in. Now this is something that mountain bikers, especially trail riders, know all too well. Because if you put the power down way too fast, way too quickly, you'll lose rear traction. So mountain bikers are most likely already across this. For road, we don't typically lose traction, but there is a bit of inefficiency there when you first start pedaling. In higher gears, not so much, but again, there's a number of variables involved here, including the rear wheel speed and your pedaling style. You can see here in the larger gear, there's a lot less dead air, I would call it. But that's how things look with a 18-point ratchet engagement. Now, 
again in a workstand just before doing the test just to get some benchmarks. And onto the upgrade, which is one of the easiest upgrades I've ever done on a bike. The Freehub comes straight off, even with the cassette on. 18 point ratchet system comes out, looking pretty worse for wear after a few years. Two springs give everything a bit of a clean. And I'll be saving those for later just in case. Spares. Also checking the Freehub bearings. Silky smooth, so nothing required there. And the upgrade kit. Very, very straightforward and simple. Two springs, two ratchet mechs, and some special grease with a lot more points of engagement. Installation with the special grease after cleaning everything up. Again, straightforward. Grease on, spring on, and in go the ratchets. And the free hub with the cassette still on it pops straight back on. Really, it's as easy as that. Rear wheel reinstalled for the initial test before jumping back into the Llama Lab. And as expected, that's a significant improvement there. Not having to move the crank very much at all. Okay, Llama Lab. And that's all it takes. 6.6 .6 degrees. Yep, not much at all. A side-by-side -side of before and after. Left there the 18-tooth ratchet prior to the upgrade, which has a lot of free air to move through in that gear. And over on the right, requiring a lot less movement. Okay, what's it mean for clipping in? Now, this wasn't staged. I This was legit. One, two, three, straight in, in the easiest gear. So the pedal stays in place a little easier. When riding along, not having to chase that engagement as far was noticeable in this gear for sure. I wasn't getting that big clunk with the drivetrain as I was chasing the free air into that engagement. And in a larger gear, it doesn't take very much rotation at all to lock that engagement in. All right. Job done. Okay, so there's some hands-on with an upgrade of the DT Swiss 350 hub on Mrs. Lama's bike. I'll give it a week or two to get her feedback on this and I'll put it in the comments below as a pinned post. Or maybe she can comment on this. I think she's a channel member. Okay, so since covering road bikes and a small discussion about mountain bikes, where this is a hot topic, it got me thinking, indoor trainers. I don't recall ever seeing engagement angle listed as a technical specification or feature of any smart trainer. Now, if you're thinking indoors, it doesn't matter. And you would be right. If all you're doing is erg mode, you'll never stop pedaling anyway. But things have changed. Indoor trainers are now being used for e-sport racing. There's money on the line. There's UCI World Championships being decided on this indoor equipment. Recently, we've seen the introduction of 10 hertz race mode. So reaction time and responsiveness matters. If you have a trainer with a large engagement angle, you'll be pushing through clean air before that free hub engages. And in a game where thousandths of a second could mean winning or losing, that matters. And in the game of standing out from the crowd with marketing of smart trainers, I'm really surprised that no manufacturer has really focused on this. Yes, it is a marginal gain, but as I've just mentioned, thousandths of a second matters. Checking the trainers I have in the Llama Lab today, we have the Elite Justo with 20 points of engagement, the Tax Neo 2T, 24 points of engagement, and the Wahoo Kicker Move that I didn't remove the free hub from, that's also 24 points of engagement. Okay, interesting stuff there from those smart trainers. And I really do hope that's an area that these smart trainer manufacturers will be focusing on. Maybe we'll see DT Swiss partner with some smart trainer manufacturers in the near future. I definitely think it's something they should be looking into, especially at the premium price level. Okay, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. That's been my recent rabbit hole. It's been a bit of fun learning all about that and getting some hands on with that bike and speculating where things might go for indoor trainers. Big thanks to GPI Apollo Australia for sending over that upgrade kit for Mrs. Lama's bike. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel and we'll see you soon.